If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach, spiritual coach. And I am here, as always, with my friend Joshua Radawan, who is a spiritual coach and specializes in working with people in the paranormal world. So, Josh, I, I, before we get into our topic, which our topic today is grounded and wired, can meditation fix my social media t- addiction, which I adore, right? So we're so excited about that. But before we get into that, I want to talk about something you said to me before we got on the call today, which is you're doing a entity removal on Monday for somebody. I am. So, you know, this person had come to me, they, they just booked a, a short reading, which if you look me up on Facebook on JD Radwin, you can you can find me there. And as I was picking up on it, we were talking a little bit and, you know, she had said she had had a recent Reiki session and that this person had removed the entities. I saw it quite differently and I could tell by the pain she was experiencing in her neck and that it's been going on for a long time. And, you know, in working with her together, we were able to kind of pinpoint where it's been coming from. So once again, this is a little bit more of a process. So we, we booked a, a future appointment to, to take care of this. But this is something I see quite a bit of, you know, especially in the paranormal community. This one is outside yeah. the paranormal community. You know, none of us are impervious to picking up some of these, uh, as you call them, schmoogies, you know, on our daily travels, you know, especially we're going to places like hospitals, you know, retirement homes. You know, a lot of these places have a lot Micro of things bars. floating around. So, or bars. Yeah. There's a reason yeah, I'm bars, bars these days. More, more than one. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, that's, you know, if, if you're interested, you know, we, we do this in the energy review process too. You know, like when I take a look at the aura, I, I also look about what's going on and around you too. So, you know, and there's many of us that are doing this if you, if you go to the landing page, so be sure to check that out. Yeah. So let me, let me uh, just say that it is possible that the person doing the Reiki pulled off a bunch of schmuggies, right? Yeah. They, they probably did clear a bunch of stuff. And it is also possible because Reiki tends to be something that people start with and then evolve from. You know, some people stay with Reiki for long periods, but it, it tends to be something that people come into fairly early in their practice. Um, and so the, you know, some of these things especially demons, right? Some of these things can hide pretty effectively. And if you're not skilled at looking for them, you may not find them, right? And, and you know, they may not present themselves as, hey, look, I'm here to be cleared. No, 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 they want to stay. They go, oh, nobody home, nobody home, nobody home, right? <laughs> They're just like hiding in the background. So, you know, it's not unheard of for, for one practitioner to say, hey, you're clear, and to have somebody else say, hey, it's a problem. Right. And that's that's um, what I told her, too. I was like, you know, there's a good chance that she did remove it. But some of these things can reattach, too. Right. Like, you know, it's you. one thing to remove it. But what are you doing with it after it's gone? <laughs> you know, right. if it's just waiting outside or, you know, like there's not a real intention as to where it's going. Um, yeah, that's or, true, you too. Know, a, a conversation about where it's going and where yeah. it's not allowed. Um, right. You know, these things can can come back. So, I mean, and we all know that I've experienced this in my personal life. So yeah. well, <laughs> this is where I mean, my knowledge of this comes from. <laughs> Right. And this is why we talk so, so much about making sure that if you are doing any sort of spiritual work, that you are skilled enough to protect your house and protect yourself and you know put your shields up, things like that. So if you don't have those skills, then you should start by getting those skills, right? That That's why it's the very first thing we start with in Welcome to the Woo is we start getting you solid that way, right? Because when you start to do work on the spiritual plane, you become more visible and therefore the schmuggies go whole, right? I mean, the guides also go whole. So it's, it's a bonus, but it's also, you know, every, every upside has a downside, right? So, um, that's the balance in this duality existence. So, you know, it is what it is, but so here's, here's the other piece of that though. And we weren't talking about this today, but we're talking about this today. So, the balance to that, though, is be very careful. If somebody is saying you're possessed or you've got, you know, demons attached or, you know, riders of some kind or schmuggies, although, you know, only my people would call them schmuggies. <laughs> <laughs> That's my term. But if you've got any of those things, then, 
you always get a second opinion, especially if they're going to charge you buku bucks to get rid of it, right? Always go in and do not tell the other person that you're looking for those things because you want to have an independent person look at it and say, yeah, this is a problem, right? And so that's the thing is because that's one of the biggest scams in our world is telling people that they're cursed or telling people that they've got something horrible and, and you have to pay me buku bucks to get rid of it, right? So just be aware. I mean, I don't want to say that that I want to be really clear. The work of clearing these things is worth buku bucks because it is a lot of work and you got to have good protection set up and you got to have a system set up and you got to really know what you're doing. You got to be pretty advanced to deal with this stuff. So it is absolutely worth the buku bucks to pay it, but make sure that it's not somebody who's scamming you first, you know, get a second opinion. Right. That, that's what um, I told her too. I was like, you know, this isn't something I openly advertise, right? Like no. at least on my social media channels, because it's like you said, you know, everybody's like, you're cursed and I'm here to fix it. And it's like, right. okay. <laughs> like, I'll, first off, I'll check into that myself. Right. But, but it's, uh, you know, it is, it is one of those scam things. And so it's when people reach out to me and maybe I'm doing a read on them and I pick up on something, then I'll say something. But once again, you know, we're talking about it here on the podcast now, but you know, it's, it's not right. something that I openly advertise because it is just one of those things, you know, whether these are bots or other people in this, you know, there's so much shit going on in regards to readings. It's really yeah. given us all quite a bad name in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, this has been a this, this particular scam has been around in the in the industry forever, right? And so much so that you know I didn't even know this, but when I opened my retail store in in uh, uh, Taunton, Massachusetts, back in 1999, they came and told they shut me down from doing readings because they said you have to have a fortune teller's license. I'm like. What the hell is a fortune teller's license? And then they tried to keep me from getting it, which, you know, basically it's you had to get a criminal background check to make sure you weren't a, a scammer or a fraud, whatever, a con artist. And and uh, and I had a clean background check and then they didn't want to give it to me. I had to bring an attorney to the to the thing to get them to give me my license because they, the, you know, Massachusetts had a law that you could not do it without a license. And so it was a bizarre thing to have to go through, but I understand it. And they actually sent somebody to test me on it later too. Right. So like I was out at a, a fair for raising money for, you know, no, it wasn't raising money. It was a, it was a kid's care day. They wanted the kids to come out and get fingerprinted and pictures and all the stuff just for safety purposes or, you know, big brother purposes, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, they were out and I took a booth and I was doing readings and, uh, you know, 20 bucks for a read. And, and uh, this guy came up and he said, no, 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 no to everything I told him. And I was like, okay, well, clearly I'm just not connecting in with you. And I gave him his money and I tried to give him his money back. He's like, no, no, you keep it. And I'm like, and we, we kept chatting and it, he was telling me things that were going on in his life. And everything I had said is things that were going on in his life. And I was like, you do realize I said that you do realize I said, that? you do realize I said, he's like, Oh, did you, did you? But basically what he was telling me is I, I was testing you and you passed because <laughs> it was, it was run by the cops, right? The, the police were running the, the day. And so I'm certain he was a plainclothes police officer testing to make sure I wasn't telling people they were cursed and trying to get, get, you know, buku bucks out of them for fixing something that wasn't real. Right. So, you know, they never bothered me again. Although they, <laughs> I remember they came into the store before this all came down, they came into the store right after I just smudged with regular Sage and he walked in and he's sniffing. And I said, I bet you think we're smoking pot in here, don't you? And he said, yes, ma'am, I do. I said, let me introduce you to Sage. <laughs> Did he believe you? Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, I did burn it and he smelled it. So, you know, they didn't come back. So I was I was totally nonchalant about it. And I was like, oh, I bet you think we're doing this. No, no, no. This is Sage, right? This is what we do to clear the space. Da, 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 da. And he's like, mm -hmm. and I just started using white sage after that because it didn't smell like pot. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, you know, always fun in the world of... <laughs> in the world of psychics and police and whatever. But we're 10 minutes into this episode. We have not gotten to the topic. So we're going to get on to the top topic now. And so the topic is, uh, can meditation fix my social media addiction? And so this is when you're dealing with uh, social media addiction, you know, that's really just searching for a dopamine fix, right? 
That's what uh, the addiction to social media is, is the constant flipping, the constant dopamine, the la, 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 right? We're, we're, we're programming our brains to be distracted, right? And, you know, I say this having been watching TikTok all morning, so I am not in judgment, okay? <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> but I learn a lot of stuff from TikTok and I waste a lot of time on TikTok. Let me be, let me be honest. So, but the, the upshot is that if you are not able to sit still and focus, you will have a hard time manifesting and you will have a hard time doing any sort of magical pra practice, which manifesting is part of, right? I mean, and I use magic again in the broadest terms. Um, it, it's just, you know, energy work, metaphysics, right? And so the, the key with any sort of energetic working is your focus and your intention. And if you cannot bring your focus and your intention into solidity, then you will have a very difficult time doing anything on the energetic realm. Okay. That isn't entirely unconscious, right? Cause we all work on the energetic realm all the time, 24, seven, 365. We work on it all the time, but consciously working on it is a whole, wholly other thing. Right. And so this is the other reason why we work a lot on, on doing your inner work because your beingness works on the universe 24 seven. Your doing this works on the universe when you focus on it. Okay. And so when you can shift your beingness, it makes the doing this much easier. Right. So, so with that, can meditation fix the social media addiction? Uh, y y w yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I meditate all the time. I'm still on social media. Right. All the time. That's kind of my point. So, uh, <laughs> will it allow you to do the things that the social media addiction is working against? Yes all day long. It will help you to learn how to focus and how to be clear in your intentions and to hold those intentions over a period of time. That is the key to doing any sort of energetic working, which we just said. Now, why we go to social media is another thing altogether, right? So I've, I've found for me, that I end up there for a couple of reasons. One is I am fried. I have overworked because I tend to get passionate and get overexcited and then I overwork and then I fall down, go boom, right? And um, that's something I've been working on personally for a while now. And so I find that when I have absolutely nothing left at the end of my day, it is, uh, you know, I used to use the TV. I still do every now and again for that. And I say, I'm gonna let the TV watch me right? I'm not paying attention to what's going on. I'm, you know, probably playing my, my game on my phone while I'm, while the TV is talking at me. But, you know, this is the sort of thing that, that we go into it for. It's, it's a, it's a way to burn time. And that's the part about it that bums me out the most. That's the part that motivates me to shift away from it the most is that it is literally wasting time until you can go to bed because you've got no more energy left, right? And you want to talk about how many hours in a day and how many hours in a week in a year that you're spending doing nothing like that. Um, it, it is, you're not living in those moments. You're existing, right? And so, you know, the very first thing for the social media addiction is to go, go and find, get a life, right? Get a life. Stop giving a hundred percent of your time to your employer because they only get eight hours of a 16 hour day. You should be giving them 50% of your energy, not a hundred percent of your energy, right? Because you've got another half of your day to continue living. And so that's part of the, the challenge. And then the other reason is if people are avoiding things, if I'm avoiding things, I will go into my phone, right? I don't want to think about it. I'm going to go into my phone, right? So that, that one doesn't happen very often for me these days because I, I've been doing work on myself for so long that, you know, looking at stuff is just what I do. It's a default. Um, but, you know, I still have my moments every now and again where that happens. But for a lot of people, it is a lot of, it, it's an avoidance tactic, it's, it's avoidance with the dopamine hit, which is why it makes it so addictive, right? It's like, oh, I get to avoid all my problems and I get to feel good. Yay. 
Yes, right? I will take that. Yes, but it doesn't fix your problems, right? It doesn't make them go away. So the key here is to, to begin to start to look things in the face, right? So, you know, that if you're doing any avoiding, it's temporary, right? Some people avoid constantly, you know, and, and I, I don't want to say some people, everybody eventually, at, at some point, everybody avoids com constantly until you learn not to, right? It, it is, it is a coping mechanism that we use for situations that we can't get out of is we stop looking at them, right? If we, especially as children, when you're, you're trapped in your family environment, you know, that's, that is what it is. I mean, you, you don't have any option to be out of it. So you just stop paying attention to it in the hopes of not being unhappy all the time. Right. And so it's a perfectly reasonable coping mechanism for when you can't do anything about it. But by the time you're an adult, you can pretty much do something about it. You may choose not to, you may not like the consequences of doing something about it, but that doesn't mean you can't do anything about it. Right. So, and, and we oftentimes will trade short-term pain for, you know, the, we'll, we'll trade long-term pain for short-term pain, right? So instead of dealing with the issue and the consequences of that issue, we just, you know, knuckle under, put up with it and, and pretend that it's okay, right? This is one of the reasons why crystallizing your discontent is so helpful, is that when you sit down and look at everything that you're tolerating all at once, it tends to give you the motivation to do something about it. And that's when you make big changes in your life and, you know, things that work hopefully for the better, right? If you're choosing consciously in the right direction for you and the path of what it is that you desire, then you're doing well, right? So, uh, and things can't help but get better. They, they will short term get worse because you deal with the breakdown before the breakthrough, right? It's always breakdown before breakthrough. So short term, they get worse because you're breaking down. But when you get to the breakthrough, then everything comes back together. I, I have a client in one of my, my coaching programs right now. You know her. You're in the group with her um, who just recently cleared away a ton of people from her life, right? And I was like, okay, so then there's a fallow period, which may be very short. It may be very long, but there's a period in which you will just be alone, you know, and then new people who resonate with you will start showing up. And for her, it, it was like immediate. They just started rolling in the door all over the place. And she she's just floored about how, how fast that change happened. But she went through the short term pain of letting go of these people that she's had in her life for a long time and da, 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 right. So all of these things are things that that happen I mean, this is just a microcosm of a larger pattern that happens in your journey is that there's always these moments of, you know, if you want to bring something new into your life and your life is full, you got to get rid of something, right? So that is part of the situation is that you got to break down the thing that you got to let go of because there's only 24 hours in a day and you got to sleep sometime and not when you're dead, right? So <laughs> otherwise you're going to die sooner, right? No, absolutely. You know, I want to go back a little bit, you know, uh, uh, to the social media addiction piece. You know, for me, I, I guess, you know, like a huge part of it uh, when I really started taking a look at it was the external validation I received from likes and loves and, you know, the thumbs up. Ah. You know, like for me, it was a lot of that, you know, like, you know, and it kind of goes back to the childhood stuff you were talking about, right? Like we had parents that we were maybe a little distant, didn't know how to, you know, like, didn't have a level of emotional intelligence that could really nurture us in the way we needed. And a lot of us, I think, seek that out. I think it's going to get, you know, worse as we progress into this age of technology in a lot of ways, because I see it in the home now, you know, like, you know, kids got a room full of art supplies and crafts and puzzles and all the things you could do to really develop like some deeper level skills that'll take you through life. But they sit and watch eight second YouTube shorts and you know, I, I wrote a poem about this that, you know, like I really feel like in some senses we are being trained to be like goldfish, right? Because if you can't hold that focus, you're not going to be able to, you know, manifest anything. And that's, some, you know, it was something I read a while back, I want to say a couple of years ago. And it was like, if you can't hold focus for 28 seconds, at least 28 seconds on anything, then it's going to be really hard to, you know, be able to, to, to get into that man place of manifestation. And I mean, I, I challenge anybody to, monitor their mind for 20 minutes and look at the madness that goes out of there right like we are all over the place and it's you know it's, it, it is what it is you know it's it's the age of instant you know gratification age of you know 
communication, like technology. So it's, uh, you know, we're, we're adapting as we go and we have to learn the tools and, and tricks to kind of circumvent what it can do to us. So that's, that's my take on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely true. And the, uh, what did you say at the beginning of that? I had something that I was going to say there. The external validation piece. External validation. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I am really grateful, actually, that I didn't come to social media until after I had a mailing list because I had to let go of the, you know, every person who unsubscribes hates me thing, right? Because, you know, it, it's so funny because I don't even think about likes. It doesn't even occur to me. I, I don't even, I wish I could turn off the notifications that says so-and-so liked your, your post because I'm like, this is a complete waste of my time. I don't care, right? <laughs> like, not that I don't care that the post is being appreciated, but I, it isn't, it isn't part of my internal validation system. Right. And, you know, not that I don't. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the likes from a perspective of they help my engagement and they help other people see the stuff. So thank you for liking my stuff. I'm just saying that it isn't, it isn't something that impacts my beingness. And if I don't get enough likes, if I have a post that gets two likes, I'm like, I, I honestly don't even notice because I don't pay attention. So, um, and, and I think that's the difference is that I, I have, I had to get over that when people started unsubscribing from my mailing list 20 years ago. Right. So, you know, cause I was very upset when it first happened. I was like, they don't love me. I didn't do something right. I, 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 right. And I was very upset. And, uh, you know, over the years I've just been like, okay, so they're busy and they don't have time for my emails in their inbox. And, you know, I totally get it because I unsubscribe. Like I, I do a jihad on unsubscribing periodically and it has nothing to do with the messages of the people. It's just like, I can't. <laughs> I'm just like, I just can't. So what just flew across your screen? Who knows? <laughs> it was a fly. <laughs> okay. All right. I had to say it because people would were going to be writing in going, there's an herb. No, I'm pretty sure it's a fly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there is. This is, this is also my, <laughs> you know, meditation room and altar room. So um, it doubles as many things. You can't see behind the curtain though. <laughs> <laughs> Woo yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's, it, it, these are the things that, that show up is uh, you, I was talking about social media from a consumption perspective, but you're talking about it from a creator perspective and that's a very different animals. So let's, let's chat about that for a second as creators, because you and I both are creators on social media, the, there is a, obviously you're trying to reach your audience, right? And you know, the likes tell you whether or not you're reaching your audience. So that is a metric that we, we, that, you know, I should track, but I don't, but I should, <laughs> but it's a metric you use to know whether or not you're, you're making an impact. And I think part of the reason why I don't pay attention so much is because I don't want to go into that spiral, right? Cause that's a really common thing for <laughs> the fly really wants you. <laughs> it's a really common thing for creators to go into this, like, ah, oh, am I giving the audience what they want? And what do I did? Blah, 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 blah. No, well, they didn't like that one. So I got to do something different and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, please. Okay. That will create creator burnout. Because, you know, you're constantly externalizing your value and externalizing what you need to say. And there's, there's that balance, right, that you need to come up with. And the balance is, am I still speaking my truth? Right? I need to speak my truth no matter what. And, you know, if people don't like what my truth is, if the people I'm connected to don't like what my truth is, I'm connected to the wrong people, not I'm the wrong person right? There are 8 billion people on the planet. If the 500 that you're connected to are not resonating with what you're saying, then find 500 who are, right? Find more who are. Because the issue isn't what you're saying. The issue is you have the wrong audience. And so I would encourage you if you are creating to pay attention to that instead of to 
Uh, do I? This is the same thing. It's it's a macrocosm of the relationship issue, right? We have a tendency to turn ourselves into pretzels to try and make ourselves into the person we think our partner wants us to be. It's the exact same thing on a macro level when you're dealing with your audience, right? You turn yourself into a pretzel trying to make yourself into what you think your audience wants you to be. Don't do that. Just be who you are and then reach out and find people who appreciate it. That's it. That's all there is. You know, me and you have had a lot of talk about that because, you know, when I stepped into the spiritual path, right, so much of it in the beginning is that that love and light stuff for me, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I am love and light. I do possess all of that. Mm -hmm. But I also possess a, a realistic based approach to how the world actually world works based in my own observation and recognition of patterns around me. So, you know. I found early on in, that I was saying things that I thought I was supposed to say instead of being the fucking spiritual badass that I am, right? Instead of saying this, this is how I actually fucking feel. I, I used to just say, you know, I, I try to tone it down and, you know, like, and it wasn't me, right? It didn't feel like me. It didn't feel good when I was saying it because it didn't have that inner flame, you know, into it, right? Like that, that, that reality, that authentic piece of myself. And that doesn't mean that, you know, like I, I go out and I'm just like, ah, to, to everything. It, it just means that when I'm, when I'm more tapped into my true nature, I can better create. Right. And it's, uh, you know, I, I do that with care, you know, it's never to trigger people, but it is to say things in a, in a manner in which is authentic to me. And because, you know, my best teachers have triggered me. I'm looking right at her during my process. It's <laughs> me grow, right? Like if you're triggered by something, you better fucking take a look at it, right? Like if there's, because there's energy in it somewhere, right? And right. so any trigger is a, an opportunity to grow. And uh, sometimes that's, you know, what, what we do. And we do it, you know, unconsciously. It's not that I, I go out purposely intending to trigger anyone. It's just, yeah. this is how I view the world. And I, I have to not fear my voice because that steps in the way of me stepping into my power. And, you know, also has backlash on my own intuition because I begin to second guess what it is that's coming through for me. So there's yeah. a lot, a lot of pieces to that for me. Well, and we even had that conversation when we started this podcast, right? Because Spirit Sherpa, is very much a potty mouth podcast. And I was like, oh, do we want to make this the not potty mouth co podcast? And I was like, well, that's not who I am. I am potty mouth girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you are potty mouth boy. And I'm like, I don't want to have to edit and censor and, and sanitize who we are. Right. And, you know, even though we'd get wider listenership, if we were less pad, well, I mean, just, there are people who will not listen to anything that's explicit. So, but the question was, are those our people? And, you know, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, I was so glad the first time the word fuck came out of your mouth. <laughs> I was yes. just like, fantastic, you know, because that's our people. Right. And, and so there's that. And, you know, we will also just say that, you know, um, it's been proven that people who are smarter cuss more. So that gives us a, a smarter audience too. So, you know, we, we love that. So anyway, but you know, it, it was a decision that was actually discussed and, and ultimately, you know, I was like, Nope, we're just going to be who we are, but for what it's worth, I'm not sure that I could really do it. I mean, I, I've, I've been on like <laughs> Christian radio stations, like actual radio stations where it's like, yep. it's so not cool. And I, ha I mean, I was so focused on not swearing during that process that I'm like, it's nice to just be free. And that's, that's, what's yeah. great about podcasting in general is like, you know, you're not, you know, censored by the FCC, <laughs> you know, like we can yeah. come out here and, you know, say what's truly on our minds instead of trying to cater it into a language that isn't our own. Yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, I can edit and I have because I get I'm I'm on other people's podcasts all the time. So that's one of the first questions I ask every time is, can I cuss? And they're you know, some people are like, oh, please, no. I'm like, OK, but I, I end up saying things like what the frig and, you know, <laughs> because I'm like shifting at the very last second going, oh, no cussing, ah, no cussing. <laughs> So, you know, is it, is it fully me? No, it's not fully me because, you know, I'm potty mouth girl. I could out cuss my sailor husband when I was in my twenties. So you know, <laughs> to be fair, he didn't cuss much, but, <laughs> but I still would have beat him if he did, but you know, it's, it's all of that. So, so yeah, you just have to learn to be who you are and to allow yourself to, to be and say, what is your truth? 
And when you do that, it will naturally attract to you the people who are most interested in that. You just have to be willing to admit that you are not, um, you, you don't have to be that perfect person, right? For the other people, you have to stop trying to make yourself a pretzel for them. You know, you, you sent me to some quotes the other day and you know, it's like, uh, you might be, you know, this is one that really stuck with me is like, you might be the sweetest peach on the tree. Some people just don't like peaches. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I love that. <laughs> you might be the best peach ever, but if I'm allergic to peaches, that's a problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Might not even be that I don't like them. Might be, I love them, but they don't love me. Right. So, yeah. So it's like that. So I think that's good. I think we'll leave that at that for, for now. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you have enjoyed this episode, please share it with somebody that, that you think could use it or any episode that we do. We really appreciate you. And you are, you're the reason we're here. So if you have questions, please send them in. You can send them to Kelly at kellysparta.com, spelled just like you see it on the screen if you're on video. If not, you know, K-E-L-L-E, -E, right? And, and also... We really want to do what you want to hear. We want to offer you what you want to hear. And I say this after I've just said, be who you are. And we're, we are, we're, we're putting out what we want to put out, right? But if you have something that you want to hear, please, please tell us because, or a question that you need to ask, we want to hear it. So, and please remember to rate. So if you rate the podcast with a rating system that actually has words, it can't just be stars, it has to be words, uh, and you send me a picture of it, I will put you into the reading drawing because I am still doing reading drawings periodically throughout the, this, and I am still getting people rating and doing that. So please do that, and then you'll have a chance to come on to a Friday Ascend call and get a reading, any kind of reading you want. And we will make that happen for you. And you can even choose your reader if you want. We'll, we'll make that go too. So if you want one from me, you want one from Josh, somebody else in the, in the spiritual, in the spirit guys school. Yeah, I can talk. Uh, then, then you can pick from them. So that's it for this week. Uh, we will see, or not this week, today. <laughs> There's many more episodes coming out the rest of this week. But don't forget that what you focus on and what is what expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm so